Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary Jurong campaign. We pick things up for episode 3 from turn 15 in the summer season of 193. So, last time we left off as we are getting attacked by Maya Chong from behind and we're trying to finish off uh, Yang Feng over here so that we can have pretty much the western corner finished so we can turn around and start taking on other factions. So we'll just let this town buy us some time with the cycle sieging or well, not cycle sieging but like they're they're gonna keep sieging us but we can get a draw every time i could turn around and break the siege but i'd rather just take care of this first especially since we are paying for the simon to get them moving 25 percent more through this forest uh, it's just really nice right now this is not gonna be a easy fight either uh, we're not gonna be favored in any of these because we basically are relying on our generals more than happy to do that. Um, Yang Feng here is also a character from Romance of Three Kingdom. He has a very nice range boost for the faction. He has some very nice javelin um, spear units that we would like to recruit once we get the confederation for his fealty. Items look good. We're just going to fight this one here. Yuan. Generic. Really boring here. Let's just go. Ah, it's raining. For a faction that relies on fire such as us, not the greatest news, but the fire will still do the same amount of uh, damage in terms of morale. Mm. Yeah, we'll put them here. They're probably below this ridge, which is why we're struggling with vision. We're not the healthiest after the last delegate, uh, but Dailai is decently healthy. Where are they? And we have a night battle, so that's another morale advantage. Not visible, so maybe they are willing to duel, who knows. Let's see. Nope. Not even her, and definitely not Dailai. Um, they all have a tier of resiliency, I believe, so I'm not too concerned. I think you can see the morale is really shaky on some of their units. Very tired. They're on march as well, and then the night battle modifiers, and I'm sure once we come in here and roar on them, and then we'll slap on their units, slap on their units. We didn't get the roar off, let's get it off now. And I think we can pull away, let the cooldowns recover a bit. We don't want to get swarmed by enemy units. If the generals come out, we can fight them. That is not a problem. Okay, both of them are not unbreakable, so that should make it a lot easier, actually. Look at them routing. Alright, we'll see if we can come up and actually get some shots. We're out of range. They'll bounce back, because some of the routing is from the roar effect. That guy's lost a lot of health, to be honest. I mean, most of our confidence comes from the fact that we know when one of the brother-sister combo dies, the other will heal. I would still like it to be a duel, though. Let's see if I can roar them down a little. Okay, let's just spread it out right here. I feel like that's a good distance. Alright, one of them's ready down. Yang Feng, the stronger one too, so that's good. Let's focus on the other. And then once our units start shooting at their units, it should be rather fast. We're going to run into the javelin throwers. And whoever has another roar, I think my brother... No, he used it on the generals, which is fine because we got them to route kind of what we wanted and we'll just target a few of the strangling units looks like we'll be fine here doesn't matter if they bounce back stay away Ooh, hold on I do want to duel he only wants to duel her no that's not that's not a deal I'll throw something at him He's dead. We hit it. Yep. The poison got to him. He has resiliency. It's fine. 
All right, nice little heroic victory for us. Now let's see if we can capture with that heroic victory. A burn officer, welcome to my faction. And we might actually go for replenishment given how the situation is. We are still on our own land, so that's the good part. Uh, but still, we are taking quite a bit of damage. Add, uh, ooh, did I not save? Okay, I didn't save, my bad. Um, I'm gonna try to give Chase. He's still not healing because he's on March. And that's probably all the army he's gonna have. So we'll be able to take this within probably two turns. And then we can probably just recall and then add them into this army, have him go rescue this. In the meantime, we might have to do a few um, draws over here just to extend that siege timing. Everything's good, nothing's going on. I feel like we can just end here. And of course, he's going to ask to attack us. Uh, we are going to take attrition damage, but because he's unbreakable, the same strategy should work as last episode. So I'm not going to show any of this. We'll just cut to the end. All right, we got the draw. No biggie. Uh, they're going to continue to attrition, which is a bit sad, but same result every time. They'll lose about 100 unit each time. Eventually, they will be not favored when we move the general over. But let's just end this for now. And the trial of the beast. Engage Anulang. Oh, we get a fancier silver elephant for fighting the army of Yangfeng. Interesting. Yangfeng's main forces went this way. I mean, he can feel free to come hit us at Ahui Nan's place. That's exactly what we want with him there. Our leader reached rank 5. We don't get the final uh, background bonus until rank 6. We're working towards that. And the extra 25% is just beautiful. We can move through this in one turn. That This has been very, very good. Um, we're going to come take this, which should make them landless, which is interesting. I wonder how they're going to deal with that. Night battle, fire. I think this is a spice market. Pretty easy to burn, spice market. And with our generals all healed up with that 9% plus standing on our own territory, should be fairly easy. Alrighty, they might charge us because we're not favored. It's always a possibility. I'm going to just pick a place where I'm not going to burn myself and see what they do. And we can just adapt to that. This is not really relevant. I'll just put it on the field. Looks like they're going to stay still. They're not going to move into us. So we're going to move into them. Um, any chance they'll take a duel on any of us? Oh, they will duel her. Not surprised, but she's the only one I'm not going to allow the duel to happen. Alright, we'll lose some units as we burn this town up. Crisp it up. I think one volley is enough. Yeah, it's a nice dry harvest day. Pull back, pull back. Don't lose people. Let that spread. It's going to knock out this tower too as it spread. And then we can go take care of that from behind that. Um, should be a fairly easy fight if they don't come out. Uh, we burned that tree. That was not planned. See, we gotta be careful where we stand. We don't wanna take any fire damage. Alright, kill their range. See, we. Very easy to burn stuff by accident. like to spread out a little. Alright, obviously the morale loss from the, the structure loss of the settlement is going to kick in too. I'm going to burn that side of the structure as well. Move them back. Kill the range units. And then probably kill the spear units. We'll also burn the buildings in the middle. As well as the buildings right here. Close the buildings right there. Shoot some of the units right there. All right, spear units. I mean, this way is not good because they can recover and just turn around and fight us. Did that burn out before he hit the tower? Interesting. 
We'll fix that, and we'll also fix that. No, they just routed. Yeah, the fire archers are really good. Ask the Naman playing against Naman factions. They're just like the secret weapon. Alright, everything should burn to 100%. That's 20 morale. Night battle is 15 morale. Getting shot by under fire is like 4 morale. Being on fire is like a few more points as well. Just everything's gonna stack up to a morale victory for us. Is he unbreakable? He's not. So even the general, I feel like we can make route. We're not even using any of the roars that we have. We still have a decent amount of ammo. One burn officer in this army. Okay, we don't want him to kill our units. That's what we don't want to see. So we're gonna send the. Oh, hold on. Could we? He. We were too fast. I would have accepted that. That would have been one more for our skill unlock. Also, more experience. I should just click yes, even though it's less experience than us challenging him. Oh well. Alright, all these rank, uh, range units ranking up under Dalai should also help unlock the skill that requires that. Um, he's not a particularly useful character, novice commander, also nothing major. We're just going to release him. And we'll confederate the tribe. So that army wandering around should just become our army. We pick up the silver elephant as one additional skill. Downfall joins us. He might hate us. No grudge. Okay, we locked out here. Anti-corruption book. Not useful right now, but will be useful in the future. Trade influence trader. I can grab that. He has a decent amount of range boost, so I think we will use him later on. I, I believe this would be his wife. That's a very good satisfaction boosting item. Sneaky chief. Counter espionage assignment. I think we're gonna fire her. There's no reason to really keep her. She's decently happy with us, but still, just doesn't do anything for us. Like everyone else is here for a reason. There's the fondness, which is really good. Spare and employed. Now a lot of this will go away. Spare and employed, recently hired, but the faction fondness will stay. This was great. I believe we can just recall them instead of walking them back. The healing rate for the mustering bonus will be better if we just recall, I believe, uh, than the current state. It's only one turn, though. Maybe not. Maybe we don't pay for redeployment. We still have the active. I don't think we need to cancel it. We'll probably just keep it. Um, Although, border and counties might not include this one, so we might not have a lot of movement out next turn. I'm gonna recall them. I think it's quicker if I recall them. Right, and then just next turn we'll summon them, have him move out, clear that camp. We could probably even just assign two generals to him. Oh, first time we see some... Uh, unhappiness and just march on them now they're also suffering through attrition I believe with three generals they're dead I'll take him even though he's unhappy I'll just get rid of his retinue at this time as well he's a Bryn officer so he's destined to come out on the field he should retreat actually I predict oh no he's he's gonna break siege wow he's gonna take it Gonna take the close. We're, we're gonna get the close victory on him. I'm surprised. So he's trapped behind enemy lines with very little health. I can build again. I'm gonna cancel this then. Then this really doesn't offer us much, and I don't want to pay for the 250 anymore. I can recall everyone, because even if he turns around and attack, the tigers are still there. Unbreakable on those are really nice for us. I can just summon Zhurong's army here next turn. Turn on him. We don't have to actually go fight him, right? We don't have to stack any rivalries or any potential of that. Once we get their last piece of land, we confederate them. He joins us as the leader, and that will work out just great. 
So this is building, we picked up a level three, which is very high tier. This has been maxed out before reforms as well. So I think we did everything we can. Now, they are very angry at us because we got siege loss reserves. It's going to be a rebellion here. I can probably just get our Baron officers to form an army and take care of this when that does happen. Um, we are taxing a bit higher. And even if we drop in now, it's not looking like the most beautiful thing. Uh, faction support will revert. Denny will revert. Okay, we'll, we'll fix it. I don't really need the money right now. So this will be fine. Let's continue. Hulu wants to trade. Ooh, but we have to pay for it. I don't really like that part. But we do... I mean, we are missing a trade route. Perhaps Menghuo can be our trade partner. So... We will wait on this. His army disappeared. Cao Song's death. Tao Tian is gonna get it. Um, we've seen him before. I think she's new. Amateur general. Black market investigation. Hmm. Own army. 10% melee armor piercing damage. That is quite nice. 15 skill points. The traits are a little bit lacking. Corjo is a good administrator option, but the rest doesn't look that nice. So I think we'll probably pass on her for now. Stubborn, giving him unbreakable, very nice. Strong, trustworthy. Blow for blow, administrator. Hmm. I kind of like the fact that he's unbreakable, but we're probably just going to rely on Ahui Nan for that job. The road suggests that I should probably summon the army here and walk this way. So, who's going to be in this army? Who's going to be the third? Someone who can give us night battle? Wait, he has lack of purpose already? So he does have night battle. Maybe we'll let him come join the fight here. It wasn't him before, it was the girl. Um... He might still be used as a proxy for now, just so that we get movement. We'll summon him back. Like, it's good to know that he gets along and all that. We're going to step all the way over here. Ah, so he retreated back a little. This way we can muster just on the borders. Probably one turn's enough. I don't expect a lot of resistance. So just a decent, like, 70 health. And then we'll put the Night Battle General back in. And this army will be good to go. We might... Trail behind. Oh, the reserve fixed itself and everything else is good. That's good news. Um, we used our deployments, but the goal is probably push out the two burn officers that we have. So him and him to form another army to trail behind our main one so that there's three stacking burnt. Um, just reduce the enemy ammo a bit more and they'll give ourselves a bit more ammo as well. We're almost at the stage where we can burn again. Um, two turns away from that. We'll see if the smoldering fire is still a thing. So by the time it's ready, it's going to be spring, I guess. The stock bonus is kind of interesting. Kind of want to see that. Um, right. Speaking of diplomacy, trade. Only Mulu. So Mulu has all his trade slot used up. Hmm. Missing out on income, but four point is not... A small amount. What can we offer to offset this? He doesn't like us. Opposing values. How different can we be? You eat snakes, ride elephants, we pray to fire, and have men who are scarred by fire hold fire maces and charge into enemies. Um, There's got to be some item that we don't need, like the cloth that our dear future husband bought us. That doesn't fit anyone in our faction. And maybe per turn. The thing is worth 430 plus a T. Um, the T is not as valuable for us as Han factions. Let's see how bad it is first. Is it like 22? Maybe less? 21? 20? So it's 20. Okay. That's not terrible. And also make sure he doesn't declare war on us for the next 10 turns, essentially. Uh, unless he doesn't want to get paid, which is probably not going to be the case. It will be cheaper if we go with cash option, though. The lump sum is cheaper for sure here. Uh, 
Uh, he likes 69. Okay. Um, we can do this. It, we get paid back in about two turns. Alright, and we're just going to eagerly await the destruction of them. And then we can probably go meet whoever controls this right now. It could be like Tuan. Could, oh, Tuan got wiped, right, by Meng Huo. So who's still left? Jiangyang tribe. So Jiangyang Poch was still there, right, where Jiangyang is. Jin Huan San, uh, Sanjie is probably over there. Dong Tuna is probably also over there. Xin is, I think, is around the coast. He's still alive. And obviously, Wu Tugu will be the big one. All right, let's see how it goes. Let's end turn for now, assuming there's nothing to build. That is correct. Join the hunt. A hunt has been organized by one of the local notables. With your dagger at your hip, you're confident that you can bag the largest kill. You spy Meng Hua amongst the hunter. Perhaps you could challenge him to a wager. So we can hunt alone or we can go on a date. Obviously, we're going to go on a date. Invite him to hunt. You and Mohu hunt, hunted together, but at the end you had claimed the largest kill and with it the wager, so a hundred. But the improved relationship is really all we're doing this for. Fledging administrator, also bad, just bad traits. He's the person we beat to get the silver elephant. That's actually good. Plus 10 satisfaction, plus no desire for higher office. Doesn't come with any sort of assignment, so we can't really use him as a assignment character. If we had like a assignment character with Humble, that'd be really good. Seems like he's kind of trapped in our radius. He's not able to run away. Uh, we want him because he's a bit sad. Let's give him an item so he's not sad anymore. This is useful, even though I probably don't have that much um, corruption with only like four or five territories. Uh, what do we want to build? I think we do want to just build land development for the replenishment, population growth, and food. We don't have any positive food. That's why our reserve is growing very slowly. Um, no one has any special assignment in our roster. I want to move the burn officers up into the enemy district as well so we can get that buff. So we're going to proxy, let's say, Ahui Nan into... I think he's one of the Burn officers. And that's it for now. Because we used up our recruitment. So they can't even reach the next. So they can't help with this fight. But he will be useful to recruit the next one. Move into the territory with the generals next time. We'll just be fighting them off. I'm going to disregard the mustering bonus. It's fine. He runs. Can I move up? I can. Okay, so now I can apply my bonus. The thing is, I really don't want to stack any rivalry between the two, but it seems like we probably just have to fight. I don't have to fight them, actually. Right? The goal is that as long as we can hit this next turn, we don't actually have to fight them. That way we never get the rivalry threat, because I want to keep him. He's a very good background bonus. He's really good in court. The ready ruler, the five point satisfaction, when he ranks up to three, it becomes 10 points. And the public order, I think, becomes eight at the end, which is just really helpful. We can tax with him. We can keep our generals happy with him. And uh, that's it for now. We can't light the fire just yet. Next turn, as we mentioned, when the first turn we can. Am I interested in getting stock for all my units? For archers, kind of pointless. Once we fire, we lose stock. Um. We might go for this, just for the 8 points of public order. Like, if you think about it, 8 points is worth about 10% income for tax. Versus, you know, uh, not that. This. Getting the 15 here, but losing this 50%. I can get 10% from this public order instead of just 15%. I lose 5%, sure, but... I get more food, I don't have to take the punishment, I can get 50% battle speed, and pretty much reasonable amount of damage boost. So I think I might just go with a summer fire this time. Or if I'm greedy, maybe autumn again, because construction is just really good. But I like to try different ones. Let's continue. 
Mughal wants to pay for military access. Do we have to? Personal friendship. Um, I don't mind this because it will improve our relationship, but I don't want to pay for it. Can I give you a food, actually? Uh, we don't have any food. We can only request food. This is pretty garbage. It's probably worth one. And then I'm just going to pay a little bit. Maybe like 200. Less than 200. We'll take that. Alright, he's running back. I like to improve our relationship with Ahui Nan, so we're gonna go with Stubbornness. And also I like Stubborn, which is giving him Unbreakable. I can't, I, I can't attack the city and not him. That's the tricky thing. Um, give us a second, there's another thing I want to do. Move him back. Who is it? Yuan? Yeah, it's Yuan. And then move them back to give the bonus. Have to be in the same county. Does he run? He doesn't run here. Okay. I can delegate for a heroic victory, which would increase the capture chance. But we'll take casualties. Whereas if I fight this, I probably will take no casualties. And I'll still get heroic victory. Yeah, let's do it. I think I can still get heroic. I can't play it that badly. All right, we wanted to drag the, you know, garrison out so that we can kill them, making the garrison fight a bit easier. He even has guerrilla deployment. Interesting. We'll probably let them come towards us. He's weak. I doubt he will duel us because he's already injured. If he can route, probably be the best option for us. Hold on. If I can... The fire should... I'm assuming he's going to be stubborn. He's going to just charge my archers. Can't let him do that. Stay back. Stay back, you fiend. My heroic victory. No. Oh my god, he smashes the ground too. Can we, can we not, like, kill him? Can we just make him rout? That would be the best outcome here. But he's so low health, I feel like one round whack, he's just gone. 2.3. Oh, 400. Okay, stay away, stay away. Let him, let him, let him go away. You're gonna rout, right? Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, that's good. That's great, actually. Now we go smash. And provide vision for the fire attacks. Roar. Roar. He needs to be in melee. Gotta make sure he's in melee. I don't need to stack this until he expires. Pretty sure they're all gonna rout. We win, right? I don't know if we got heroic. We took a beating over here. We lost five men here and about 17 here. 22. Oh, we still got it. Good. Alright, let's see if we capture... Because getting the release will create the fondness too. It's only 9%. Yeah, we didn't get it. Um, I'll take the replenishment actually. So now to prevent another fight, we just night battle this to get him away from it. And we'll delegate this. Uh, yeah. I know the casualty is going to suck. I mean, zero open the general. Oh, actually, we can just recall him, and that's a pretty good heal. Confederate means we grab him. We tear up. And I believe we get an extra army slot, which is why he's still on the field. No, he's not. No, he, uh, he is. Did he hate us? Does he hate us? He doesn't hate us. No rivalry either. Good. Okay, so... I'm going to have to try to incorporate him into the army somehow. What is his default ability? Southern Wrath. It's a smash. Okay, I'm going to 
give you the weapon? Maybe, maybe not. Not sure. I don't have the seer position, which is where I want him to be, but temporarily... Actually, let's just put Yang Feng here, and then Maya Chang can become a seer once we reach the queen, which I think is the next tier. Requires a lot of prestige, but we should get there no problem. We have extra trade, finally extra army, cave lord position, even though we haven't picked out any cave. I haven't seen any general that's good at being a cave lord, so that's why we haven't created any yet. Which is a bit sad, but it's a fine. Your units all need to go away. We're going to recall him, let him heal up first. I'm glad none of the rivalry and grudge happened. I really oh, like to use okay. him. Like he's good enough that I could consider shifting my brother off this the air position. All right, two easy targets. Xini is still alive. Xiangyang tribe still alive. That's who we kind of predicted. Wu Tugu is on the other side of the river uh, in the main city. He has wiped out Tuan, who I think started here. If we can get, I mean, he's also taking Mulu's land. Like, if he confederates Mulu, we confederate half, he confederates half, we get married, we wipe out Shamo Kup, and end the campaign. So, that should be pretty smooth. Not much we can do here. I don't think there's even any building really to be built. Um, I could just let him heal by recalling him, or I can just keep him with his health because we got to move forward anyways. Anyone willing to trade with us? That's the question. No. So there's no value to keep any of them alive. Sini's tribal bonus is 10% from industry. That's not that useful. Um, Jiangyang tribe is 15% melee damage for all Naman unit. That is actually pretty good. And Maya Chang, who we just got, give us 15% range block chance for all the units as well. Also pretty decent. Okay, all is well. Let's continue. And they decided to start the war with us. Good. Good. Basically, among the tribes, only Menghu is our friend. Everyone else we meet just basically goes to war with us. Reach rank 5 with one character. This is already done, so we get the next military tier. Awesome. We finally know 10 factions, so the political breakthrough also happens. Walk your path. I think this might be from one of his uh, traits. Let's see what trait he has that could result in this. Maybe not, actually. This is just a random event. Walk the path you walk. Well, I, I like the satisfaction boost. He's dipping, so I feel like for him, he needs to become this tribal council position. Maybe he just missed his wife, who we fired. Um, anyone good for Cave Lord? We're looking for the typical administrator traits. Any good background for that as well? My public water is not worth that much. Unfortunately, this might be. Oh, that's new. Unblooded um, Fighter. 30 points, increased bodyguard side. Oh, it's really good for um, records mode, I guess. For this, not really. All right, we'll look at whoever's like lagging behind from previous turns. Maybe one, oh, I mean the cordial, 10%. If we had Zhang Ke, she would work. We don't have Zhang Ke. We have Yunnan though. Yunnan also, no, Yunnan is um, industry and peasantry. Right, so she's not, I mean, Spice? I guess Spice would be the only thing she can help. Cordio, I think it's Commerce and Spice. No, just Commerce, so not useful at all, actually. Yeah, we really don't have a good candidate. It's okay, we don't need to have a Cave Lord. Let's move up. Both of them declare war, both of them have to meet us on this path. I hope they come to us, actually. Right, so after we unlocked one of these square circles, they gave us a mission to unlock the next group of military, which is the rank 5 one. We did it. So now we actually have access to all the reform that we would have before we unite all the tribes. Um, so let's take a look at what's good. 
plus 10% replenishment, very good. We can get a southern elephant, also very good. Uh, we already said that this is also going to be square. This is where it's going to go circle. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think we'll just go for this one. I think nothing beats 10% replenishment right now. The population is actually pretty decent because um, there's population as a form of income for non factions. Do I want to spend money on better units? We could. Like, we could throw in a few followers the mace, but right now the former combat that we're doing is really just... It's just really all generals. We do have these new Javelin Spear Guard, and we have formations, and we mentioned that this is a very decent frontline unit for us. And also, they have a bit of range, so the burn traits that we've been stacking would also kind of play into it. He has Grilla Deployment Night Battle for his units. I'm going to let him... Grab these. We'll we'll play with these units. I'll get six of them actually. They have encourage. They have a ranged weapon. They can get turtle, and they throw a very deadly javelin. Fifty armor piercing on that. Um, only three shots. Hopefully the burn trade can boost this a bit higher. Yeah, I'm gonna keep them. No worries. Our income tanked. I know, but. Our army strength just went way up. Four. <laughs> right, it makes sense. Like, even if you get like 100% ammo, they only go to six, right? So, he doesn't have a lot of... Oh, he does have a lot of cunning. Let me give him this then, even. Because he's he struggles with satisfaction. That would help both situations. Um, I know he's in the army, but I still don't want to give him that. He defaults to a cunning horse, which is great, actually. Because... The initiate has 30 points of cutting. This is perfect. He has the right units. All right, so let's see here. Continue with that. We still don't have any. Oh, I lied. When did we get you? Ah, he came with my Achha. We picked up two new generals that didn't get a chance to wipe out last turn. He's disloyal and cheap. He's agricultural development, which I don't mind, right? That's a good one. Administrator for Silk and Spice. We found our first cave lord. We found our first cave lord. So he's not going to use that. He's going to get this, even though I don't think there's, any, there's no industries where we are. But the extra expertise will reduce the cost of buildings, which is why he's going to get this horse. Not gonna get that. He's gonna get this one for the expertise. And you're gonna become my first cave lord in Yongchang because of the spice market here. Yep. Wonderful. And you, you're getting fired. We have full flame again. We talked about this. I think it's decent. Um, we should try it. And I want to know if the smoldering... It's back. It's back. So pretty much we don't heal. Oh, it's a bad time to do it because we'll... So this is our, we're, we're not going to move this turn. This is the last time we can heal our units. Basically, it's going to just be very bad going forward. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's experiment. And because we put in um, that eight points of public water bonus that we now have, I'm going to shoot the tax up. This is dropping mainly from faction support. That 12 point will go away in time. So that's not a worry. And we still have pretty decent positive faction support will go away. So we still can get 9 points here, 12 points here. So that's still positive 9. This doesn't change. So we could even jack it up a bit more going forward. But this is a decent amount. And let's continue here. Let none tear a thunder. Meng Huo is a fierce warrior, ambitious leader, and a loyal friend. His lands are vast and prosperous. You share many ideals. There is much in common between you, and together you would 
be a force near unstoppable to join together with me marriage however is this a step you're willing to take so we get the event we get the marriage and we become one we get all the fealties from the ones he got Zhang Ke, Jian Ming uh, Meng Huo is called the fealty of man uh, Tu An, A Hui Nan and we should tear up I believe right oh, not enough I guess we have to just take more cities but instantly we got so much more. Um, Meng Huo would be giving us Nanjong uh, elephants, as well as the Nanjong infantry, the champion spearmen, new tribal council positions. We need to probably use that. Of all of these, my favorite one, where's, where's the, yeah, Jianning's wolf pack. That's really what we want. Maybe on her, actually. Right, 5% melee evasion. We don't have the income for it. We, we just basically exploded in terms of roster size and army size and unit size. So Meng Huo's army is right here. Alright, we need a second to just... See what we have, see who needs to get fired. 15% range. I don't think he needs to stay with us. He has wolf pack. I'm probably gonna fire all his units before we fire him. Amateur general, armor piercing for own army. That's actually a good one. Does he have good traits? I guess decent enough, but not super good. He's also on the short list of someone we could just probably fire. Did we pick up another army? That's... Yep, we did. Meng Jie's army. Meng Jie's army. They're deep in Mulu's land. We're no longer at war with Mulu. Meng Huo was, but we're not. So he can't fight us either. I need to pull this army back in order to recall them but I can delete units on foreign land as well so just gonna make this cheap they're bankrupting us all right the two brothers of Meng Huo and we will just take their items away for now that can go one of yeah, both of these can go on leadership positions. Public order, 5% replenishment for all army, pretty good. Like our war targets change drastically now from what he was fighting. I'm sure a lot of the faction would declare war on us. I really would love to keep the Nanjo elephants. And on champions, pretty good. But these two generals, I want to get rid of. I'll probably reunite Meng Huo with his two brothers as an army setup. So for family bonuses. I think we'll just keep the elephant. Alright, income's way positive. We did get a lot of land, so that's the positive parts so I think all I have to do is fire these two generals and we're good we got only one more tribal council position so who's the most angry person out of all of you? Meng Huo is pretty angry, but I think Meng Huo should end up in one of these positions instead. Well, the, the time when we unlock Seer, it's going to be Maya Chang. So maybe temporarily Meng Huo goes here. 54 point swing. Yeah, it's massive. Um, Yeah, let's do that. Maybe one of them can be a good cave lord. Yes, actually, 
Mondia can be a good cave lord. Well, you're not so much. So there is a position for you. Jianning. Jianning will be a very crucial one. I only have one? Oh. That's pretty <laughs> unfortunate. Okay. There's still a bit of replenishment this turn, but it's going it's gonna be negative ten next turn. Oh, his unit didn't count against the cap? I can I can recruit two of them? Don't mind if I do actually. And then wolf pack for the rest. I think we'll just fill you out with fire archers. Or tiger slingers. Also good ammo. Faction unique tiger. I know our income just can't take this, can we? 400. And this is with a tax increase. But I think it's okay. We'll be a bit negative. After we conquer some more land here, we should be fine. I think Monghu can solo that with the brothers. We gotta recall them out of this land. They they gotta go back to our land. Uh, he might declare war on us, to be honest. They'd get really ugly from behind enemy lines. We should have a trade partner. Ooh. Okay, Shamo Cook. Just because I don't think we'll be wiping him out anytime soon. Oh, I actually kind of want the water clock. I'll give you two. I mean, I, I, I meant I'll give you three. Offer one food. Make a bit of cash payments. Might be like 500. Yeah, pretty close. I might still trade with Jinhuan Sanjie. Just because we need money right now. I can let someone else wipe him, perhaps, and he can pay us at the same time. It's gonna be 90, isn't it? Yep. Maybe 91? Nope. Exactly 90. Oh, we can also become a vassal and then let him steal my brother? No, it's not gonna happen. No pass. Okay, I think we figured out. So as long as Mulu doesn't declare war on me, I feel like I'm fine. Okay, we got a pretty bloated roster now. Let's continue. Oh, right. All sorts of building needs to be built. Can't continue just yet. No one has anything unique. Sure. Yunnan still needs to keep going taller. I think we'll upgrade the counties first. That's expensive. Jiao troop. Right, two variants of tea. Requires an entrepreneur. This has more trade influence on it. This just has flat commerce. Let me make that decision later. 
get the lumber yard going. Oh, they already made this decision for us. Two thousand. That's really expensive. I am not sure if I guess we can spend it. We still have a decent amount of income left. Everyone's at least plus six. This will drop us by nine though. It's a little bit too severe. Although everyone can take it. But there's no need to do it. All right. I'm gonna take the mustering bonus for at least one turn. Hopefully two turns. All right, we traded for a water clock. You don't need a dagger for now. Use the water clock, get the replenishment. It's decent ability. Although stump is also pretty good. I'll give him an elephant. Alright. Oh, wait, what happened? Did Mongol have an elephant by any chance? No. Okay, you don't need any of the items right now. Let's continue. Alright, Utu will declare war. I'm okay with this one. Will some okay with this one? Mulu didn't declare war. That's the key. Jade Bird. Just a relationship improvement. So, if we took a look at diplomacy right now, Duosu is declaring war against us. So, we need to shift. Well, his army is right next to us. We need to shift Menghuo's force to take care of them. Um, it doesn't look like we can. We might end up losing this. I might just cancel this. Uh, but that's probably not going to get saved. I could just retreat back towards Zanko over here and posture ourselves in a more offensive setup against them. Do we need an army to beat them? Probably not. All right, I think I can beat them without an army. They're also going down here to take this. So I think he's definitely going to reinforce this instead and let them take the livestock here for now. We know that where their army is, so we can move against them. Or actually, we don't even have to move with them. We can move against him because we don't know where his army is. So I don't want to go here and then get cut off from behind. That's what we should do. Thank God they didn't declare war on us, so we can move back, get recalled, set himself back up with Monghua's main forces here, and we'll move on from here next time. So that's kind of the current setup. That big confederation event definitely helped us out, but also added the burden of absorbing that faction, and also new enemies everywhere too. Um, but our process, progress towards uh, the tribe un unity is halfway there, so that's good. Uh, we just have to remove some of the key opponent now. Mulu is actually rather weak. I think he has like three pieces of land down here, but he's a valuable trade partner. Duo Si will be probably Menghuo's target after defending here. So basically we'll defend, set up, charge back out, take out him. They will move on, wipe them out, fight Wu Tu Wu, and probably start fighting Liu Yan's faction here as well. Um, that will probably heat up. We are trading with Jinhuan Sanjie, we're trading with Mulu, we're trading with... Is that it? Oh, Shamu Ke, that's why he didn't declare war on us. So yeah, those are the peaceful faction on us, and the ones that we aren't trading are fighting us. Pretty straightforward. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, and see you all next time. Bye!